The Google Nest Mini is one of the most popular smart speakers out there, and in this video, we're going to compare it to the newly released Apple HomePod Mini, which we've spent over a month testing and comparing to the Google Nest Audio and the Nest Mini. If you're interested in seeing us compare the Nest Audio and the HomePod Mini, I'll link a video that we did on that subject here and in the video description below. Now, while the Apple HomePod Mini is much more expensive than the Nest Mini, both speakers take up around the same footprint, so you're likely to place them in the same places around your home. In this video, I'll take you through how the Nest Mini compares to the Apple HomePod Mini and which speaker I think people should ultimately go for. First up, let's talk about sound quality. Here the HomePod Mini wins out. Compared to the Nest Mini, it has a bit more bass but a more full sound. Neither one sounds amazing, especially considering the HomePod Mini is much more expensive, but it's fine for background music and podcasts. Just don't expect to get a detail-rich sound out of each speaker. Here's a sound comparison so you can hear for yourself. The HomePod Mini can also be stereo paired to get a richer and fuller sound. Next up, let's talk about the design of these two speakers, and the one thing that stands out that I think makes the Nest Mini win, which is the inclusion of a mute mic switch. The HomePod Mini has no way to turn off the mics listening for the Siri wake word, whereas the Google Nest Mini has a physical mic mute switch. If you get a HomePod Mini, you really just have to trust Apple, and that's likely what Apple is banking on here, that they have enough trust with their users that users will trust them with their privacy. Given the amount of marketing Apple does on privacy, and to be fair, the amount of privacy controls they do build into their products. but. It's still, to me, at least a weird omission to not give Apple users total control over their privacy by being able to physically turn off the microphones on the device to stop it from listening to them. Yeah, it's a weird omission. Now, there is a way to stop the HomePod Mini from listening through its settings on an iPhone, but in my view, just putting a mute switch on the thing would have been a better way to handle this. Another odd design choice with the HomePod Mini is the power cord is attached to it. It's not removable. When comparing the design of these two speakers, one area that I think wins out with the HomePod Mini is the design of its music controls. The HomePod Mini has inputs at the top that are a bit more intuitive than the Nest Mini, thanks to the plus and minus symbols subtly etched into the top of it. With the Nest Mini, you need to hover your hand over it to illuminate the volume up and down areas, but it's less clear than the HomePod Mini which one turns the volume up and which one turns the volume down without hitting one to test it out. Both the Nest Mini and the HomePod Mini feature volume controls as well as controls to play and pause media, and the HomePod the HomePod Mini also allows you to summon Siri by tapping and holding the top of the device. Both speakers have the ability to be able to move music currently playing on them to other speakers and speaker groups. And the HomePod Mini also has a neat trick where you can move music to and from the speaker with your iPhone by holding up your iPhone close to it, which is pretty cool. Available music services on these two speakers is another point of differentiation between the two of them, and the Nest Mini here just totally wins out. Here in the US, the Nest Mini allows you to set your default music service to YouTube Music, Spotify, Apple Music, Deezer, and Pandora. It's only missing Amazon Music and Tidal. The HomePod Mini just has the ability to set Apple Music as the default music service. But Apple has stated that it has given the ability for other companies to build support for their services so that you can play music from them on the HomePod Mini as well as the HomePod. For example, Pandora right now is currently supported, though you do have to add on the phrase on Pandora when requesting a song, artist, or you know, music genre from Siri, which is suboptimal. Podcasts are another area where the Nest Mini wins out. The Nest Mini supports more than one podcast service that you can use with it and set as the default service. At the time of recording, you can choose either Google Podcasts or Spotify as the default podcast service, but Google has said that others will be added in the future. At the time of recording, the HomePod Mini only supports Apple Podcasts. 
The Nest Mini can also natively play radio from services like Sirius XM as well as TuneIn, whereas with the HomePod Mini, if you want to use those services, you'll need to AirPlay them to the HomePod Mini from a device like an iPhone using AirPlay 2, which is all a bit more involved than if the services just ran natively on the speaker. Though the HomePod Mini does have access to Apple's own internet radio stations, Apple Music One, Apple Music Country, and Apple Music Hits. One of the major features of these two speakers, besides being able to play music and podcasts on them, is the smart assistants that run on them. With the Nest Mini, you have the Google Assistant, and with the HomePod Mini, you have Siri. Now, one of the first impressions people have with smart assistants is the response time, and when comparing the response time of the Google Assistant on the Nest Mini and Siri on the HomePod Mini, I found Siri to be much quicker on the HomePod Mini. Here are a few examples. What's the weather? It's currently clear and 37 degrees. Currently in Raleigh, it's 36 degrees and clear. Averaging about Tonight, the forecast degrees. is around 33 and clear. Who's the CEO of Tesla? The answer I found the is CEO Elon Musk. The CEO of Tesla Motors is Elon Musk. What's a catfish? Catfish are a diverse group of Here's the of definition fish, of catfish, for their prominent a freshwater barbels, or marine fish with barbels whiskers. resembling whiskers catfish around the mouth, typically bottom dwelling. The three largest species alive, the Mekong giant catfish from Southeast Asia, the Wells catfish of Eurasia, and the Piriba of South America, to detritivores, and even to a tiny parasitic species commonly called the Kandaru, Vandelia serhosa. Neither the armor-plated types nor the naked types have scales. What's five times 10? Five times 10 is 50. The answer is 50. Both assistants are good at doing basic things like setting timers, reminders, controlling smart home devices, etc. One advantage the HomePod Mini has is that it can make outbound phone calls but also take incoming calls and send text messages as well. Google hasn't been able to figure out how to do this with the Nest Mini even if you have an Android phone. Both speakers also allow you to broadcast to other speakers and specify which rooms to broadcast messages to. Apple's intercom feature also works across other Apple devices like the iPhone, iPad, Mac, and Apple Watch, which is pretty cool. One odd quirk with Siri on the HomePod Mini is if you try to use Siri hands-free on another Apple device, like an iPhone or an iPad, the HomePod Mini is just going to answer that query by default, regardless of the fact if it's in another room and the iPhone you're trying to get Siri to answer on is right in front of your face, the HomePod Mini is still going to answer that query. So that's definitely gonna annoy some people out there and it's not behavior you usually experience with Google Assistant devices. Both assistants can also recognize multiple people. So when you ask Siri or the Google Assistant for your calendar events or reminders, the answer will be specific to you. Now, another major thing you can use these two speakers for is controlling smart home devices. And the Google Assistant on the Nest Mini can just control more smart home devices than HomeKit, which is what Apple uses to control smart home devices. Though Apple has been adding more and more products to its HomeKit program, and by now, most of the mainstream smart home products will work across both platforms uh, from brands like Philips Hue and many of the major smart thermostats out there. HomeKit also has some exclusive features like the new day night light temperature adjustments which switch your lights to daylight during the day and then a warmer tone light for evenings which is pretty cool. Also one small difference between the two to note is that with HomeKit you need a hub device to work with your smart home devices and the HomePod mini is that hub device whereas the Google Assistant doesn't need a hub device for smart devices to work in your home. Alright one of the last things to talk about with these two speakers is phone compatibility. And here the Nest Mini wins out as well because it plays well with both Android and iOS, allowing you to cast music and media to the Nest Mini from both types of devices. The HomePod Mini requires an Apple device to cast audio to it, and it's really only made to be used with other Apple devices. All right, the last thing to talk about are the apps you use to set up and change the settings of these two smart speakers. The HomePod Mini uses Apple's Home app found on an iPhone, and the Nest Mini uses the Google Home app, which can be downloaded from the App Store and Google Play Store. In the Home app, you'll have the option to change the room the speaker is categorized under in your home, 
add or change alarms, add automations, allow explicit content, etc. Further down, you'll see the Siri settings for the HomePod where you can change her language, voice, see your Siri request history, and have the ability to turn off listening for the trigger word. So you can change a few things here and there, but overall, there's not that much to change with the HomePod Mini. Now, when you look at the Nest Mini settings, you'll see you have quite a few things that you can change and tinker with. Like with the HomePod, you have the ability to change the Nest Mini's room and settings for YouTube, like restricted mode, etc. Oddly, there's no alarm section to see alarms you have set, but you can adjust the volume for alarms and timers. There are a couple of standout features I do want to call your attention to that the HomePod doesn't have. Do Not Disturb will mute reminders, broadcast messages, and other spoken notifications. Night mode will reduce the volume of responses and decrease the brightness of the LEDs on the speaker during specified times. Lower volume when listening will lower the volume of media currently playing on the speaker when you say the trigger word. Reverse device controls will flip the LEDs and volume controls for when you change the position of the Nest Mini or mount it on a wall. Paired Bluetooth devices will show you the Bluetooth devices you've paired to the Nest Mini, which is another important difference between it and and the HomePod Mini. The HomePod Mini cannot be controlled like a Bluetooth speaker. You can also set the Nest Mini to default playing media on another speaker or speaker group, and you can also adjust the EQ for the speaker as well. The blank Google sensitivity allows you to adjust the sensitivity of the Nest Mini listening for its trigger word. So if it's not hearing you as well as you think it should, try upping the sensitivity of the speaker. So as you can see, when it comes to customizing the settings for these two speakers, Right now, the Nest Mini just has way more that you can customize. And this is the perfect segue to my thoughts on these two smart speakers. Overall, I think the Nest Mini just does more for less. Sure, it doesn't sound quite as good as the HomePod Mini does. However, it plays well with both iOS and Android devices. It integrates with way more services, has a more powerful smart assistant, and it costs $50 less than the HomePod Mini. Now, while the HomePod Mini does sound better than the Nest Mini. If you want a better sounding Nest Mini, you can just get the Nest Audio, which sounds better than the HomePod Mini and is the same price. Or if you're fine with the Nest Mini's audio, you can even get two of them for the price of a HomePod Mini. So with this pricing structure and the fact that both of these smart speakers now support Apple Music, it makes it really hard to recommend the HomePod Mini to almost anyone. In my opinion, the Nest Mini is clearly the better buy when comparing the two. All right, well, that's our comparison between the Nest Mini and the HomePod Mini. I hope you found this video helpful and informative, and if you did and liked it, make sure you hit that thumbs up button below and subscribe to the channel for more comparison videos like this one, as well as other videos on Apple and Google products. Well, that's gonna do it for me. For six months later, I'm Josh Tedder. Thanks for watching.